For me, wildlife photography started right here on Long Island. Long Island has a diverse landscape, and depending on the time of year, different birds migrate in with the changing of seasons. And along with the local wildlife, it makes for a pretty interesting portfolio just getting outside close to home. However, the need for me to spread my own wings was necessary to become the professional level photographer I was looking to be. Photography has been a big source of strength in my life for many reasons. It's certainly been a source of pride. It's been a source of income. It's taken me all over the world and introduced me to people that I may have never met. I've harnessed much of what I've seen into my own creative energy towards being a professional wildlife and conservation photographer. However, with changing times comes new perspective on just how I use photography as a vessel to channel information, knowledge, and awareness to a much larger audience. To preserve and protect the wildlife I photograph, it starts right here in our own community. Disposing of trash properly, recycling, and refusing the use of those one-time use plastics we see everywhere, like shopping bags, plastic straws, balloons, and even plastic takeout containers. About eight million metric tons of that plastic ends up in our oceans annually. And by the year 2050, there could potentially be more weight in plastic in the ocean than there is in fish. So a new take on living with empathy for the world we live on takes a whole new level of thinking, but moreover, the dedication of everybody to make this kind of change into an effective reality. First, we have to embrace change, thinking how we go about living our daily lives with this responsibility at the head of our daily operations. The actions that we have when we go outdoors should be just as important, treating the land like a delicate egg. And leaving as little trace of ourselves as possible should be the ultimate goal of everybody that ventures outside. The animals have it down to a science, to a point where we study them to adapt to many of their practices. The animals haven't just adapted to the earth, they've embraced it as their lifeboat, maintaining a perfect ecosystem and harmony with the natural earth around them without ever upsetting the balance of life nature, and climate. Now, through photography, I make images that I hope everybody will fall in love with. I try and build a relationship between my audience and the subjects I photograph by engaging your love for the animals, with hopes that you connect with it on a more personal, intimate, and even spiritual level. I want to inspire everybody to build a natural, instinctive concern for all living creatures and the lands they share with us so unprotested. Because as we move into the last known forest to live, we destroy the habitat of those already living there, with no restraint on how much we take for ourselves, and no thought of the consequences our own way of life impacts the world today. So it's time that we make a realization that we could literally destroy ourselves by overconsumption, lack of discipline, and control. Wildlife photography has led me to thinking this way. Because the animals that I have searched out and spent time with and photographed in detail have had a dramatic impact on me as a person. My relationship with the outdoors makes me feel like an ambassador to all living creatures, a voice that they do not have to keep their existence on the minds of those who so easily forget that we share this planet with so many species. And coexisting with them and long-term preservation should be foremost in our thoughts. Now the animals are smart. They've learned to adapt to all their surroundings, but even more, they've learned to, to adapt to all the obstacles we consistently put in their way. I captured this fox in midair during its hunt. It can detect rodents underneath that snow and pinpoint their location with incredible accuracy. However, it's the rodent in the background that's the killer of all creatures. Its design really never had animals in mind when it was made, and it's a barrier to natural migration paths and dares the animals to cross its line with their lives. Canada goose jackets were so in style lately, but the down inside are feathers torn from the bodies of living geese, and the fur around the hood taken from trapped coyote that are snared and held for days without food or water. Think about how many people use this product and multiply by city and then by state, and perhaps it draws a not so pretty picture on how we could overlook such a brutality on these animals for a product that we can synthetically create. Now, this is not to really point anybody out for using it, but just to make a realization that our everyday usage has a direct effect on other lives. And we inflict, we inflict pain and suffering for our own comfort. 
But Birds of Prey have always been a main study of mine since the very beginning. Probably because New York has had a healthy and diverse amount of birds to photograph, including many owls, eagles, and hawks. But a lot of these birds don't make it to adulthood these days directly because of the human element around them, and I'll explain. Because of the way birds of prey hunt, it brings them dangerously close to the road, often leading to a bird strike. Fast-moving traffic always outmatches the abilities of these birds to get out of the way. Rat poison is a major killer of these creatures. Poisoned rodents are easily captured by these predators, and the ingested toxins are passed right down the food chain, effectively killing multiple species and their young in the process. Pesticides also have a negative effect on the world today. Spraying these chemicals do not really target one problem insect. They affect all living creatures. With just a bit of study, natural alternatives are available and should be the only way people adapt to these annoyances in life. In addition to birds, I've spent a lot of time photographing bears all over North America. I've had the privilege of photographing black bears like this cub, grizzly bears like this family, and I love this picture because the cubs are copying their mother to the T, the same foot up, the same steps, really cool. Coastal brown bears, some of the biggest bears in the world, and the really rare spirit bear, and polar bears from the Arctic. Now, bears have a bad reputation for being killer animals for the predator instinct and humans on the menu. However, my experience reveals a much more calm and curious creature. Bears face their own challenges these days. Subject to a mass hunt by humans every year, deforestation and overfishing are all human impacts on the bear's lifestyle today. Human encroachment has lessened the amount of the bear's living space. With, and combined with less food, it leads to a lot more stress on the animal to live, more competition for the food, and less space to roam free. Overfishing in the Pacific has led to a decline in salmon swimming up rivers to spawn. Well, bears base their lives on that food source and will begin to have trouble finding fat sources to bulk up for winter's hibernation. But even worse, Bears will stop having young until times of plenty, ensuring that a healthy cub can survive to adulthood. Depleted sources of small fish also have a major effect on all types of shorebirds and seabirds. Birds like the common tern and black skimmer that migrate right here to Long Island have been dramatically affected by this problem. Their numbers are down about 50%, and they will not recover unless we manage our resources more properly. If less birds visit the area, the land will no longer be reserved, crushing all hopes of return nesting in the future. So the animals are under siege, and our incredibly wasteful habits are becoming overwhelming and too difficult to tackle. We need to figure out a way on how we're going to act in the future towards this global expanding problem. And I believe it is with you, the next generation of hardworking, problem-solving, global advocates that can lead the charge for a more harmonious planet. So I turned my attention to Yellowstone National Park. With a quick plane ride, I could be at America's first national park and photograph an array of animals in a pristine oasis. And Yellowstone never disappointed me, because after 10 years of photographing there, I've been able to capture some of the most incredible wolf photographs to ever come out of the park. My Yellowstone trips usually include Grand Teton National Park, which is located directly south, and Glacier National Park, which is a few hours north but taught me the importance of protected lands and wilderness, because these are the last wild places on Earth. Now, the further north I traveled, the less untouched the world became. And photographing the natural world is what compels me to go back out and explore further, to develop a voice for the animals, using my photography as a medium to tell compelling stories about the animals using images that people can react upon in a positive way. Because in this new era of social interaction, I think an opportunity arises for us all. We can embrace this technology by spreading the word in a much more effective way. And with great support in numbers comes a forceful change for good. A change at home by using less waste and more reusable items. A more proactive way of living, like walking and biking and even carpooling to work and school. And a whole new way of living that benefits all living creatures by the use of non-toxic chemical cleaning products, aerosols, and soaps. 
support the preservation of all wild places, like wetlands, forests, and parks, and always protect the animals that live within it. Let's take a stand for those that have no voice and make a change on how we live our everyday lives. Thank you.